It's the Kyle Hyman Show on Redeemer Radio. This is Kyle Hyman, and with us to share some of her story of suffering and sacrifice and how we can make the most of it is Therese Williams. Thanks for being here, Therese. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. So, for people that don't know your story, you have spinal meningitis that came from 18 months old and really have very little mobility, including you need a special breathing machine to help you at night. Yes. With all of this, what is the most frustrating? Uh, the most frustrating part about my handicap is being misunderstood. Hmm misrepresented, misunderstood, especially by the people that I love. In what ways do they misunderstand you? Uh, there's a tendency to to use my handicap as a way of controlling me. It's very easy when someone has to be taken care of physically for everything mm -hmm. and it's very easy for the caregiver to think that I don't have a brain hmm. to make my own decisions in terms of relationships, how I speak with people, when I speak with people. Pretty much you can use every little thing about my life and my situation to take advantage not on purpose, not intentionally, but it happens because of the fact that I have very little physical abilities. Right. But I think that God gave me independence through the fact that I have a very high-functioning brain. Hmm. And I have a strong spiritual life. So I take those two things as great gifts from God, and I try to use those gifts for His glory. Where does the strong spiritual aspect come from? Uh, daily prayer. Not only daily prayer, but minute-to-minute -minute conversation with God. Hmm. When you have a really good friend, you want to get to know that friend more and more. And my best friend is Jesus, so I don't go too long in a day without talking to him. Yeah. Quietly, in my thoughts, in my heart, in my soul, everything that I think about and pretty much everything that I do, every activity is centered on Jesus. This is a choice that I make every single day. And I try not to let people around me, even my family, try to interfere in that relationship. In fact, they get very strong and very almost negatively assertive when I feel like Jesus and I are being misunderstood and misrepresented or someone is trying to interfere in that communication with Jesus. Your book is called Love Your Cross, How Suffering Became Sacrifice. I think the idea of loving your cross might seem difficult, if not impossible, for some people. And I think given your situation especially, I would imagine that there was times that you did not love your cross and maybe even would be angry at God or blame God for the situation that you're in. How did you turn this into loving your cross? Like I just said, it's a choice I make mm -hmm. every single minute of the day. I don't blame God consciously. If I do blame God, I say I'm sorry for blaming you, Jesus. Hmm. Because it's never his fault. It was never his fault that I got spinal meningitis in the first place. It will never be his fault for the rest of my life until he takes me home. It will never be his fault. I fully understand that he allowed me to have spinal meningitis for the very reason that he wants me to be his partner 
in my own salvation, but also for the salvation of the world and the church, in particular the church. Mm-hmm. I was given a mission from the very beginning to sacrifice for priests and for the church, mm-hmm. the priesthood as a whole, and then certain individual priests that I've had the wonderful gift of meeting in my life. That's been my mission. I I came to realize that when I was in my tra- 20s, hmm. when I became an adult, when my brain matured enough to understand you became a quadriplegic because God wanted you to suffer for the church. Hmm. So I accept that. I accept that every single day. It's very hard. I don't particularly like it. In fact, my family can tell you that I really despise it at times, but on the other hand, if I want to get to heaven, I have no other choice but to accept it. Right. So I do. So what does that mean to accept your cross and to love it? And what is the process of turning suffering into prayer? Um, to accept your cross means, just as you said, to turn that suffering into prayer. So when you feel, when you're going through physical suffering, when you're going through emotional suffering, and emotional suffering is very much worse than physical suffering Hmm. uh, because it hurts way deep down inside for a long time. Physical suffering goes away, but emotional suffering can last for years if you choose to let it. And so when you're experiencing those intense moments of suffering, try to consciously take that pain and give it to the Lord in prayer. Say, Jesus, I give this to you. You have a reason for me going through this. And unite it to his suffering on the cross. He's there. He's there waiting for us to do that. He's walking with us in those moments. And when we consciously unite our sufferings with his suffering, when we say, I accept this cross for your glory, and I love you, please help me to carry this cross. Give me the strength to carry this cross. Because without you, I can't do it. What do you hope that people get from hearing your story, reading about it in your book? I hope that they can feel the love of God in their suffering. I hope that they can do just what I said, to make their suffering into a prayer. As I just prayed, whatever they want to say to the Lord, help me to do this, help me to carry my cross. If you're angry about it, that's okay, too. Mm. He wants us to express our anger to him because when we express our anger, we're being honest with him. Mm -hmm. And that anger might be eating us up. So the more that we can get rid of it, in a sense, to give it back to him, the more we can allow him to heal us of that anger. And I think that's very important. I think that we should um, try our best to... Think of Jesus as a loving friend, not as someone who's trying to hurt us in our suffering. Hmm. And if we can do that, we can probably over time, however long it takes, release our anger and give it back to him. He got angry at the scribes and Pharisees. Mm -hmm. He expressed righteous righteous anger. Anger's not a sin until you let it um, take over. Well, your story is so fascinating, and I just see the joy in your face and photos and some videos and stuff that are available, and I know this is going to be inspiring for a lot of people, especially those that are dealing with suffering and aren't sure how to process it. They need to read your story. It's called Love Your Cross, How Suffering Becomes Sacrifice, and it's available through Tan Books, and you can find that at tanbooks.com or wherever you get books. It's available online at most retailers, so people can check it out. Love Your Cross, How Suffering Becomes Sacrifice. Therese Williams, thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me.